Hi guys and welcome back to Redstone Productions. Today I'm really, really happy to introduce you to a new series of videos dedicated to studio tours. We're gonna tour some of the best studios around Europe for you, so please stay tuned. Hi guys and welcome back to Redstone Productions. Today we're visiting a very, very big studio. That's the Galaxy Studios where a lot of film get actually recorded and mixed in Aura 3D. We're gonna check all of their rooms. We're gonna be welcomed by Mark and their main engineers, Patrick. Please, let's check it out. Hi, hey, Mark. It's good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you for inviting us. Not a problem it's at all. It's such a pleasure to be here, man. It was such a nice weather outside, even better. Bright sunny day. Yeah, and it's not that far away from where we're based. You know, in Amsterdam, it took, uh, it took us two hours. Less ride. than two hours of drive without any traffic jams. Yeah, Should be fine. that's super yeah. cool. All right, Great. so please tell me all about this wonderful space, man. Everybody talks, you know, delicious about Galaxy Studios, all of the productions you've been working on the last 20 years. Everybody knows Galaxy Studios for its music recordings, Big time. of course. So studios originally were opened early 90s. You know, there's quite a lot that we have to offer from this address. There are four main companies located at this address. Um, we have the Galaxy Studios Group, which holds Three companies, that's the first three logos that you see here, that's the Galaxy Studio. Purely related to the music, recording, okay. production, editing, mixing, mastering, etc. Also, uh, post facilities for image and sound. Then we have a second company called Mollywood, and the logo itself mentions already it's film financing and tech sheltering. All right, um, yes, we all quite need Quite that. obvious. <laughs> and we have uh, a third company called Zilvermeer Production. That's a co-production activity on specific feature film, documentary, audiovisual work. The last logo over there, what's that about? That's Aro Technologies. Right. Uh, that's actually a new kind of sound format that was designed here by Wilfried van Baalen together with his crew at that time. Uh, it's sound in 3D. It's not just music in 3D, but sound in 3D. 3D. Aura Technologies is a technology company, not purely content creation right. or mixing or whatsoever. These are top engineers that are working on all the codecs to get the format into the market so that you can have it in theaters, in home entertainment, in cars, in games. Great. So um, I think it's wise that maybe we go Let's get a little in. bit into yes, the studio. So we've super much feel. looking into it. I want to see all of the toys you got in there. So that's our wall of fame, oh, part of it, of course, we did so incredibly much more than what's hanging on the walls here. So you see I mean, the yeah, wall see here. Lot of I can see, I don't know, man, trigger finger. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we see Deus, very huge in Belgium. Ooh. We have Guano Apes, we did a few for Scorpions, what? Hoover Phonic. Yeah, if we keep on, we're actually showing you where people actually get to drink their coffees, recharge their batteries. There's even, uh, I've seen this guy over here. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Should try that out. Wow. This is where the magic happens, huh? What? This is where the magic happens indeed. So this is our galaxy hall. Uh, this is where it all started. 300 and 30 square meters, we have what? about nine meters of height. The complete Galaxy Studios were actually built according to the, like we call it, the box and a box principle, where every single room that has to do with sound is completely physically isolated from all the adjacent rooms, from uh, the outside wall even. And what is very, very unique and very special for Galaxy Studios is that all the rooms are built on springs. We have an isolation of over 101 dB, where it is uh, isolated until a frequency below three hertz even, that three is hertz. insane. So indeed. you gotta have huge springs down here. Yeah, indeed. Because that's the only way to bring it that low. To indeed, three indeed, hertz. correct. This is like 1,600 tons built on springs. So wow. we can maybe go a bit yeah, further as well. Yeah, let's so go here. Can I do what I like the most? Yes. Oh, one more time. Okay, I think you're gonna see me back that because would be I definitely fantastic. love this sound. It's guys, it's fantastic. And what do we have in here? That's uh, that's a beautiful grass. This is also a unique uh, <laughs> piece of equipment. This is a very special Steinway. This was handpicked by Wilfried himself. If you would have a Yamaha or a Roland synth, and you would select the D Grand feature in your preset, it is still this specific. Steinway so, that is sampled. Wait a second, you sample, you guys? We sampled this specific piano in this room 
And that still is the preset in your current uh, synth from Roland from Yamaha. Yes. Wow. I can see that you have if basically you two inputs, times yeah. 24 channels of Neve 88Ds. Correct. And you actually took the effort of bringing the preamps in the room. In the room Which itself. is the best possible signal to noise ratio because mm -hmm. now you're basically out of this, you're gonna run lines into the control and that's gonna have no degradation whatsoever. And you have 12, 24, 12, so 48 new preamps here, <laughs> ready to rock and roll. That's, that's fantastic. Correct, yeah. Another piece of information about uh, the studios, we have constantly air conditioning running 24-7. 365? 365. All right. Always the same temperature in the room. Very important for the piano, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. I can see Sorry. a bunch of windows, glasses. Indeed. And everybody's talking, what's behind the glass? From this perspective, we have our analog control room over there. That's called our API room. We have our digital control room behind this window. It's very important that from each control room, we have a visual connection to this main that's, recording that's space. Very... Each of the control rooms has their own smaller recording room and have an additional vocal booth. So there are additional so, booth and recording rooms yes. around the yes, control indeed. rooms. Everything can be linked together, of course. Oh. We can patch everything to one control room. So this room has a natural reverb of around 1.8 seconds. But okay. if you would like, we can make it dead dry. So we have carpets for the floors. We have curtains for the walls. We have the acoustic panels over there to maybe even capture specific drum sounds. I mean, now I'm uh, curious about the other rooms. Sorry, Quick Patrick, speaking. for the intrusion. No really nice to meet you. Nice to meet Thank you. you for inviting us to your room. No worries. You will have a quick Welcome interview. to my living room. Yeah, yeah I can see that. It's you will have an interview with Patrick later on where you can go in uh, much more detail about all the specific The technical stuff. nerdy stuff. Mm -hmm. We yeah. can do that and see how he actually works in this room. Yeah. But yes, yeah, just a quick sneak mm -hmm. peek, guys. This is uh, basically yeah, the Neve 88D digital room. Mm -hmm. It's basically connected to the main live, uh, the main hall, but also all of the other room. Plenty of outboard gear, the usual suspects, as you can see. We got the H4000 or H3000, those versions. So here we got the time-based effects. In here we got all of the EQs, tube tag, GML, Avalon, Tube, Stereo, EQs, then we got the CL1Bs, maybe it's somewhere in there, but here we got more EQs, and I guess, yeah, the CL1Bs are gonna be there. So this is <laughs> time-based effects, EQs, and that's basically all of the compressors. All right, I'm sure we're gonna be talking more about this room because this looks fantastic, and I know this is your room, you know, it has, uh, as good as your pockets. So we're going to be really asking you how you use it uh, okay. in your own productions. But thank you for having us and for the intrusion. Yes. Very Keep quick. on working. Thank yeah. you so much, man. Sure. See you later. Thanks, See you Patrick. in a bit. All right, and here we are in one of the live rooms of Studio One. We've seen the beautiful, more than 350 square meters just uh, next to the ADAD. Now we are in a yeah, much smaller room, even though I should say this is not small at all, <laughs> <laughs> right? And we have a very special guest. So Tom is actually Hi. showing us up the setup he built up in the room, he rigged up together. Please tell us all about it because this looks insane. I work for Oro Technology, specialized in uh, production in immersive sound. So that's why you see a lot of loudspeakers in this room. The setup you see basically is a standard 5.1 setup. Yep. And then on top of the four corners, you have four speakers facing down. And that is the 9.1 Oro 3D sound setup. That's the minimal sound setup we use in immersive sound. On top of that, there is also a third layer, which is the top speaker facing downwards. And additionally, in this setup, we also have four more loudspeakers, and that is the Dolby Atmos sound setup all to test and to compare all the formats and to do Ooh. some research as well. That's quite a demo room indeed. That is a demo room. I wish, could you please play something? Of course. So we I can audition to. the system. Let's do it. Let's do it.
thank you so much. Thank you so much for you know showing this uh, incredible setup that you have it's in my place. Pleasure and to be able to switch back and forth and to do it with a guy that actually knows what's the technology behind it. You're right, it's not black magic. It takes oh. a lot of effort, a lot of creative minds together with tech minds to be able to carve such a codec yeah. and make it so flexible that you can even use it within your Porsche car, right? Yes, correct. So that's, uh, that's really, really nice to see it in place, to see that you actually do all the quality control also checking within yeah. this room as well. And then you also have the availability to switch back and forth and also compare it with the Dolby Atmos, which is one of the main competitors out there, of course. Yes, absolutely. So again, thank you so much for My taking pleasure. the time. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you back soon. Maybe one, one more we bring in. Who knows? Yep. Voila. Okay. So, Whoa. as I mentioned, this is our API control room, API desk. This is actually the first one that was created, a real pioneer case, uh, which was co-designed together with Wilfred here. I, I was um, looking at that number, I'm like, okay, 001? No, 000 serial, so it's a unique there. That's and unique. then I go see, we go up to 80 channels on this thing. I'm completely blown away, guys. I might take a couple of seconds just to breathe it on, because to be honest, I didn't expect such a thing. I mean, I'm looking at 560, 550s, compressors all over the place. I'm like, this is madness. I can imagine having live bands playing in that room, passing through those preamps, mm -hmm. those 2520 op amps and all of those EQs. It's fantastic. And you have uh, very different sound system setups, different configurations. I can see big channel like mains on the front and the back. It's a 5.1, mm -hmm. I That's assume. 5 .1. Yeah. We got another 5.1 from PMC, probably. Correct. Yeah, Why that's not? the 9.1, actually. Yeah. So that's we have the, the top layer as well. I see with cool. the high layers and then we have uh, yeah just the near field Neumann and the more I look around the more I faint around you know it's it's a lot of nice classic outboard gear I mean 2500s API SSL bus compressor STC8 stereo compressor from Crane Song 1178 that's a two channel 1176 LA2A Summit audio compressors 2254s <laughs> those are the grandparents or the 33609 for the guys looking at the show bunch of 160s tube tech seal 1Bs Varimu I mean you got the whole shabadam as I used to say to my students this is the whole package I mean, you come in here with that room and so many tools. If you know how to drive this thing, you can go pretty fast. I can tell you that. All right, that's that's fantastic, man. It's super, super cool. I mean, guys, just look around the patch bay. It's insane. As we were mentioning before, also all of the rooms are connected so we can send signals back and forth, no problems. On that side, we have our vocal booth that is linked to the studios. We have our Studio 3 over there. It's a smaller recording studio. So like you mentioned, everything can be connected to each other. So uh, in terms of flexibility. Yeah, there's no, nothing yeah. that can be arranged in here. Pick up the next room very carefully. I might be fainting for real, <laughs> right? <laughs> Cool, so cool. What, what else do you have on the menu for me now? We do a recording in the hall. Editing, mixing is in either one of the two control rooms that we have. And of course, there is the next step. And the final step is we go into mastering. Mastering so we have is a very it. specific, very good mastering room as well. So we will Please have show beat. me around. This is our mastering room, as you can see. Very specific, very good setups. I mean, I can see that you have one of the nice, big, old SPL MMCs. Correct. The MMC1. I had a really nice chat at the Music Mess a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and he was mentioning about these big MMCs that are still around in big studios, and he mentioned this studio, this month, which is good to hear that. And I see you have more SPL stuff. I mean, I can see that you have super high end converters, super high end headroom EQs. You can actually remote control all of them because there's one for each channel left, Correct. right, center, left, surround, right, surround, LFE. You can control all of them from this guy over here. And you got the usual back CQ, you got the GML, you got the Masalek limiters and the Sers, Comp 1, another Millennium Transparent. I got this box as well, the Vitalizer. When it comes down to mastering room, guys, 
that's what I always tell to my students, start with the room. Because if you don't have a perfect symmetric room and properly treated, there's nothing to master in there. I can see that the symmetry of the room is perfect. I can see that everything is mirrored mm -hmm. and everything is symmetrical. And, uh, and I can also see that you got some super high-end hi-fi speakers over there as well. That's the Eccle Stones. These are indeed very spectacular. I can also see that you guys have uh, yeah, three different tape machines. So you can have your mix on tape, master it here and dump it back onto another two-track Studer. We, they got two Studer 820s and they got a four-track Ampex in here. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything is possible, I can see. Correct. It's all depending on the client's solution. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, state-of-the-art high-end mastering studios yes. in this case. I mean, again, once I pass through the hole, recording my band or somebody's band and mixing the API, mm -hmm. I might be mastering it in here. Yeah, Be welcome. deal, right? Cool. <laughs> deal. What else do we have? There is actually an extension of the complete facilities. So in terms of the, the, the size of the facilities, it has been nearly doubled. So there's right. an extra uh, construction made for all the post-production facilities. So I would suggest that we go to the new part of the yeah, building man. where we can see all about the uh, video and audio Please, post production. Please, let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. Big time. Great. All right. Let's go. This is the machine room, so it's supposed to be noisy. That's the only place where noise is allowed. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And uh, basically, this is where all of the brains of, I guess, the Neve desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually here. That's mm -hmm. the brain of the Neve desk. You can see that you have extra tape machines laying around. I can see a Sony Digital 48. See a couple of more studers over there. Those are the big boys, though. Those that's are, the big boys. Those yes. are the 224 tracks. All right, and then we got a Tascam 16. We can uh, go downstairs uh, to have a quick peek, where so you the, can see the springs, where all the, the construction, construction is in the, of the rooms. Yes. Okay. I think we can have a quick peek in our 4K rating room. That's cool. So, Let's do that. Follow me. So this is the complete new part that was constructed. So Pietro, like I mentioned, this is our one of the two grading rooms that we have. We have another one on the other side of the building that's a 2K grading room. In this one, we can go up to a resolution of 4K. So with a specific 4K Barker projector that we have. It was completely designed from scratch according to all the EBU standards. Okay. So in terms of uh, distance from projector to screen, the size of the screen, to make sure that we can deliver and support up to the highest standards that are available internationally. Yeah. This was pure for video grading and video post-production but now we go into the audio post-production. Now we are in a new room again. This is another room that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. So what kind of work gets done in here? So like I told before about the normal audio post-production workflow, yeah. you would gather all the dialogues, the music, the sound effects, etc., and group it together in a pre-mixing phase. So right. this is actually our pre-dub, our pre-mixing stage. Yeah. We have a similar setup as we have in our final mixing stage, the oratorium. So we can work on the icon D control, but we have a DFC setup as well. And you have the same... It's exactly the same as we have in the big room. Gotcha. And actually, in where it's relevant, we are working on the network so we can open up a session in this room, do a little bit of tweaking in the pre-mix and just running to the oratorium, the big room, and opening the same session there and finalize it in the final mix stage. So that's actually, in terms of efficiency, of course, this is very, that's, very that's really important cool. and very flexible. This is, again, another incredible room. I can see that basically everything is up to specs. Everything is uh, as it's supposed to be. I see, again, mm -hmm. symmetry in the room. I see a different height. So you basically have the Aura 3D in Indeed. place big the time. Here. And the fact that you have the network in place, then you can basically open up projects mm -hmm. and sessions yep. all over the, the facilities. That's, uh, again, a huge advantage. It's going to just speed up the process mm -hmm. big, big time. That's a preview of the Porsche Panamera on the inside, which holds the Oro 3D native system in there. You could play back native Oro 3D content in 9.1, but of course everyone wants to use its own library and its own content of CDs, MP3s, sure, whatever. Sure. 
We have a brilliant upmixing feature in there as well. That's called the Aromatic tool. So yeah. you could effectively connect your iPod, iPhone, whatsoever, Any and upmix into a 9.1 atmospheric sound, and this is absolutely fantastic. Depending on what the platform will be, you will go mixing into a specific room. And finalize the mix. And finalize there. the mix. So we have one of the nicest final mixing stages okay. from Europe. Uh, right. It's called the Oratorium. Let's go in there. Let's go so into the Oratorium. So you can have a feel about what the Oratorium is. I can give you a brilliant demo of how the room can sound. These are Hollywood titles, for instance, here the Blade Runner, you have the Transformers, the John Wick, we have Jason Bourne, Passengers, you name it. These are titles that have also been mixed into the Oro 11.1 format for feature film. So here you can see already that we are moving to an Oro 3D audio approved room. All right, let's, let's take one, so mm -hmm. Oro 3D approved. Joe's let's around. Enter. What? The hell? Can I do my thing again? My thing. That sounds different. This is a listening environment, it's not a tracking environment. So what do we have in here? So this is actually our reference for the final mixing of a feature film or uh, an audiovisual works. It could be an opera, it could be a musical. We have again the 4K projector by Barco. It's the same one as we have in our grading room. We have a very unique system here where See. we have the two different systems to work on. Either we work on a Icon D control for handling the Pro Tools, but we can things. go to, through a DFC set as well. We have like 135 seats in this room. So to give you an idea about the specific speaker layout in this room, so we have like 60 eight speakers in this specific room. Look behind the screen. I can turn them up. Well, you see like six speakers okay. lighting up at this moment. So yeah, these are not just six speakers. These are in the Oro 3D format, six individual channels. So we have six individual screen channels. Got you. To make sure that it is as natural as possible. possible. So if we take a look around, you have in red, Oh. Now I see Our them. left surround channel, that's an array of speakers as it is in a normal theater. Left surround, right surround, but we are talking about RO 3D that has three layers of sound. So we have copied the exact basis layout into a height layer. So that's exactly the same as your 5.1 of your lower layer. I didn't see that. We are missing one that's in the top. You right. can see them lighten up again. So we have three layers of sound to gotcha let's say, create a perfect cube of sound in which you can sound design, edit, mix in the perfect 3D space and 360 around you. In terms of the normal workflow for an audio post-production, yeah. uh, all the dialogues, music, sound effects, etc., are coming together in the pre-mix phase. Right. There's not a complete array of speakers there for the surround channels or for the top channels. It's just one speaker per specific channel dedicated to that channel, which is a completely different experience than what uh, is of going course. to be experienced in this specific room. We have exactly the same setup with the D-Control, with the DFC. <laughs> we can work on uh, on the network, so we could have a session playing on the network, which can be opened in the oratorium and in the pre right. So in terms of flexibility, that is actually the best way of working. So going back to you know the entrance where we're talking about yeah. you guys offering 360 package, Correct. where everything that, when it comes down to producing sounds for movies or not, in all of the different uh, expanded surrounds, or if you want to call it 3D sounds, mm -hmm. it's all possible within this facility. So that's, again, mind-blowing for me. All right, Mark, thank you so much for inviting us over and showing us My around. Pleasure. I mean, again, blown away, blown away, blown away. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> but I was told there's no Galaxy Tour without a proper Galaxy Beer. That's the thing. All we right. have our unique Galaxy Beer. It's a dark triple. Ooh. I hope you like dark beers. I do like beers. Triple beers. It's a typical Belgian one. It All tastes right. absolutely fantastic. And you can only drink it in the Galaxy Studio. So everybody who likes it, taste it. Cool, You're man. welcome. I would say let's go for one or two, right? Yeah. Cheers. Definitely. Cheers. <laughs> So Pietro, I yep. promised you a nice beer. Right. Look at what I got here. Uh-huh. This is our unique Galaxy Dark Triple beer. So that that's we have. the one. Gee, look at this. It's a 7.5% dark triple. 
I'm going to open it up for you. Thank you, man. Cheers, Pietro. Thank Cheers, you for the visit. Man. Thank you for your time. Hey, it's my pleasure. For Cheers. Sure. Cheers. That's really good, actually. Hi guys, I hope you like our tour of the Galaxy Studios in Belgium. I was completely blown away by the facilities and the state-of-the-art equipment you find in there. If you want to see more studios, so please don't forget to subscribe and keep on watching our YouTube channel. There was an at, at the backyard of my parents' house, yeah, which is here in front, yeah. So here around? Yeah, that's here around. Yeah. Right. There was an nice. old empty chicken coop, yeah. And okay. there, that, that was the first idea, yeah? So the first idea that we are going to rebuild a chicken coop in a demo studio. Wow, man. Yeah, that was so it. So that was the first, let's say, the first stone you set up yes. to what we are yeah. looking at, right? Yeah.